In this presentation, we will give you some physical activity guidelines applicable for people between 19 and 64 years old. We will start with some general principles. So, aim to be physically active every day. Any activity is better than none, and more is better still. Do strengthening activities that work all the major muscles – legs, hips, back, abdomen, chest, shoulders, and arms – on at least two days a week. Do at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity a week or 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity a week. Reduce time spent sitting or laying down and break up long periods of non-moving with some activity. You can also achieve your weekly activity target with for example, several short sessions of very vigorous intensity activity. Or you can do a mixture of moderate, vigorous and very vigorous intensity activity. You have a choice. You can do your weekly target of physical activity on a single day or over two or more days. Whatever suits you. But make sure the type and intensity of your activity is appropriate for your level of fitness. And maybe it's... Uh, not recommended uh, for previously inactive women to do uh, vigorous activity. Let's see what counts as moderate aerobic activity. Moderate activity will raise your heart rate and make you breathe faster and feel warmer. One way to tell if you are working at a moderate intensity level is if you can still talk but not sing. Examples of moderate intensity activities include brisk walking or doing water aerobics or riding a bike or dancing, also double tennis, pushing a lawn mower or hiking or rollerblading. Now let's see what counts as vigorous activity. Vigorous intensity activity makes you breathe hard and fast. If you are working at this level, you will not be able to say more than a few words without pausing for breath. In general, 75 minutes of vigorous intensity activity can give similar health benefits to 150 minutes of moderate intensity activity. Most moderate activities can become vigorous if you increase your effort. Examples of vigorous activities may include jogging or running, swimming fast, riding a bike fast or on hills, walking up the stairs, sports like football, rugby, netball and hockey also are part of the vigorous activities, skipping rope or aerobics or gymnastics or martial arts. It's up to you to decide. Let's now check what counts as very vigorous activity. Very vigorous activities are exercises performed in short bursts of maximum effort, broken up with rest. This type of exercise is also known as high-intensity interval training, also HIIT. Examples of very vigorous activities may include lifting heavy weights, or doing circuit training, or sprinting up hills, or interval running, also running up stairs, or going to spinning classes. And let's talk a little bit more about high-intensity interval training. Remember, your all-out will be completely different from your sisters, your brothers, or your best friends. Push yourself to your own personal limit and then dial back. What matters most is the effort you give it, not outcomes like speed or distance. Listen to your own body. And it's always a good idea to check with a doctor first, especially if you have a medical condition. Are you curious to know what activities strengthen muscles? To get health benefits from strength exercises, you should do them to the point where you need a short rest before repeating the activity. There are many ways you can strengthen your muscles, whether you are at home or in a gym. 
Examples of muscle strengthening activities may include carrying heavy shopping bags, are you surprised? Or doing yoga, or pilates or tai chi, also lifting weights or working with resistant bands, also doing exercises that use your own body weight such as push-ups and sit-ups, which you can easily do at home. Heavy gardening such as digging and shoveling and also lifting and carrying children. Let's talk a little bit more about non-exercise physical activity. One major benefit is that despite minimal perceived effort, they burn anywhere between 300 and 1000 calories daily an attribute called non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. Here are some ways that NEAT can show up in your life. Dancing when you are walking the dog or cleaning the house or playing a musical instrument or typing. Folding laundry is also part of non-exercise physical activities. Let's check some more examples of non-exercise physical activities. Using a standing or treadmill desk. Also, carrying your groceries. Doing the dishes. Shoveling snow. Also, singing. Having sex is also part of non-exercise physical activities. Or playing with your kids or chasing your cat. You decide how to do it. But remember that added up these activities can account for about half of an active individual's daily energy expenditure. Can you imagine that? And now let's see what you can do if you are an office worker. How to integrate the fitness into your daily routine. You can decide to cycle or walk part, if not all, of your journey to work. You can get off a bus or subway stop before your destination. If you need to drive, try to park further away from your office and walk the rest of the way. You can discuss project ideas with a colleague while taking a walk. You can stand while talking on the phone. Or you can decide to walk to someone's desk at work rather than just calling them on the phone or sending an email or sending a Slack message. Find some more ideas for daily fitness while you are at work. You can walk up escalators rather than standing still. Go for a walk during uh, your lunch break. Use any activity tracker to keep track of how many steps you take. Try to find different walks and alternate between them during the week. Exercise before or after work or during your lunch break. Your office may have a gym or you may have an access to a nearby swimming pool or squash courts. Be inventive! And now let's talk a little bit more about the connection between the exercises and the brain. Where your brain is concerned, exercise is a must. The exercise needn't be back-breaking either. Moderate intensity aerobic exercise at 60 to 70 percent of maximum heart rate seems to do the trick. How can you calculate your maximum heart rate? Simply subtract from 220 your age. Aside from memory functions, fitness has been associated with improvements in anxiety and depression symptoms as well. You already know that not all exercises are created equal. Let's do a summary. For brain fog and concentration, the best exercises are yoga, tai chi, aerobic classes. For memory, aerobics, walking and cycling. To improve blood circulation, the most appropriate are cardio activities like walking, riding a bicycle, running, swimming, kickboxing, skipping rope and skiing. For stress and anxiety, yoga. And for depression, aerobic exercises and resistance training. Don't forget that your brain is absolutely important. Think of your brain as a muscle. If you don't care for it, some of its parts will shrink and their function will deteriorate. 
to optimize their capacity, you have to continuously train them and push them further and further each time. This will ensure that their current size and shape is kept in place or even grown. Whatever way you proceed, try to commit to exercise as a habit, almost like taking a prescription medication. And let's wrap up the presentation in three simple sentences. Do some type of physical activity every single day. Number two, any type of activity is good for you. And number three, the more you do, the better.